Happy Thanksgiving everybody, Trevor here, and welcome back to another Top 10 video. And for today's Top 10, we'll be discussing my Top 10 picks for the best Pixar films of all time. Besides Kingdom Hearts, Pixar is also one of the biggest reasons why I'm a loyal Disney fan to this day. But that doesn't excuse Bob Paycheck and his horrible mismanagement at Disney and its parks. And it doesn't excuse John Lasseter's sexual misconduct towards his fellow co-workers either. But those aren't important right now because I only want to talk about my favorite films made by Pixar. Which is one of the biggest branches of Disney. And to be honest, I love all these Pixar movies except maybe Cars 2 and Toy Story 4. For this list, not only will I include those from my childhood, but also from today's generation. However, I won't be including any sequels, spin-offs, or shorts because then we'd be here all day. So without further ado, let's blast off with this brand new top 10, shall we? Number 10. Cars. The first Cars movie is about a famous race car named Lightning McQueen, who accidentally gets lost in the middle of nowhere and eventually raced to Radiator Springs where he works for a community service and eventually learns throughout the movie that fame isn't everything. My nephew Alden loves this movie to death. In fact, he watches it almost every time on Disney+. Plus. But the reason why this is so low on the list is because I know a lot of people who don't like the franchise in general because it's one of those generic famous and everything type stories and that the talking cars concept has been done before in other media. But personally, I don't think the Cars franchise was that bad. I think it's pretty good. While it isn't perfect in terms of consistency, particularly in the second movie, it's far more watchable and enjoyable compared to its respective knockoffs. What I like about Pixar's Cars in general is not only the likable, relatable, and interesting characters, but also the voice acting, the animation, and that it reminds me of another franchise about talking cars known as the Chevron Cars. But in this case, all the characters have eyes on their windshields, except one minor character, but that's not important right now. One of my favorite characters, besides Lightning, is Doc Hudson himself, who was the original Hudson Hornet until he crashed in 1954. Which brings me to another fun fact. Did you know that the Hudson Hornet was based on a real-life race car of the same name? Learn something new every day, am I right? While I do prefer Chevron cars in terms of nostalgia, I think Pixar's cars is pretty cute and fun to watch. So if you are into cars in general, then I recommend this movie to you, your family, and your friends. Number 9. Wally. -E. Wally -E is about a little garbage collecting robot who was the last one of his kind on Earth. He was also very lonely, with the exception of his cockroach friend, and longed for love when he often watches the classic flick, Hello Dolly. But eventually, he came across a white robot named Eve, which leads Wally into a big adventure out in space. First of all, I think this is a very cute and fun family film. I love the cute characters, especially Wally, as well as the beautiful visuals like this one. Secondly, I like how the relationship develops between him and Eve. It's so sweet and heartwarming. In addition, I thought the main villain Otto was pretty interesting, since he is based on HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey. His main goal was to keep the morbidly obese humans in the Axiom and not let them return to Earth. Luckily, he got shut down by the captain during the climax of the film, though it's kind of funny that Otto was voiced by a Macintosh instead of an actual voice actor. Kind of reminds me of Robot Jones' original voice in Whatever Happened to Robot Jones. But the reason I put this as number 9 is because I think Wally is quite underrated and deserves more attention these days. Not to mention, I think it kind of deserves a sequel of its own, where we explore Wally and Eve having kids of their own. Okay, I don't know if robots reproduce in this universe, but at the same time, it would be quite interesting. But overall, this is a pretty cute movie. Number 8, A Bug's Life. 
This movie is about a blue ant named Flick who tends to be accident prone. So he decides to go on a journey to find some warrior bugs to come and protect their kingdom from the hungry grasshoppers, only for the warrior bugs to turn out to be circus performers. Like Wally, -E, this movie is quite underrated, and I think it should have had a sequel a long time ago. Not to mention that A Bug's Life has very likable characters, a great story, beautiful CGI animation, and memorable music. In fact, one of my favorite characters besides Flick is the main villain Hopper, the leader of the Grasshoppers because he's a tyrant like any other good villain in fiction. I also like the hungry caterpillar Heimlich, who eventually becomes a barfly in the end. Sort of. Yeah, he's pretty funny too. One of my favorite moments in the entire movie are the outtakes during the ending credits. For example, when Hopper says, Are you saying I'm stupid? But every time he talks, Princess Ag keeps on giggling, and she's like, YES! Another example was when the red bird was about to eat Heimlich, only to break down like a machine, and Heimlich's like, Is it lunchtime yet? Another reason why this movie is number 8, besides the underappreciation, is that it was rivaled by a DreamWorks movie known as Ants, another Ant story. And to be fair, I think they are both good in terms of each having a different concept. I'll eventually make a top 10 DreamWorks films video, but not right away. I just want to get this one done and over with. Even though I don't like bugs in real life because they bite, sting, and pinch, but when it comes to fiction, this is one of my all-time favorites in terms of writing, animation, care development, and music. So therefore, I highly recommend it. Number 7, Ratatouille. This movie is about a talking rat named Remy who wants to become a chef. But when he arrives in Paris, France, that's where he meets a chef named Alfredo Linguini who has trouble cooking. So Remy decides to do the cooking for him by controlling Linguini's body. For one thing, this movie is really funny. I love the jokes and memes in this, especially the part where the evil head chef Skinner says, Welcome to hell. I also like the movie's message that anyone can cook, and that taking risks and doing something unexpected can lead to success in parts of life. And that's another thing I love about these Pixar movies, is that their messages aren't forced like in most stories. One of my favorite moments, besides the humor, is when Remy sets up groups of rats into different teams like Team 1 or Team 2, and then they do the respective tasks. All in all, Ratatouille is one of the funniest Pixar films I've seen yet. And if you're into trying some new foods or yearning to learn how to cook, then this would be the perfect film for you. In fact, it's a million times better than its respected Brazilian knockoff, Ratatouille, which is a pretty terrible title if you ask me. Number 6, The Incredibles. The Incredibles is about a family of superheroes who had to save the world from the evil Syndrome, who was once Mr. Incredibles' number one fan in the golden days. Like Ratatouille, this movie is also very funny. One of my favorite characters is Edna Mode because of her mannerisms and voice. She's just fun to watch. Other examples of funny moments include a toddler riding a tricycle, who just keeps waiting at the same spot in front of the Incredibles' house every time until after Syndrome's final defeat, the kid's like, THAT WAS TOTALLY WICKED! See, even little kids can be funny sometimes. Speaking of Syndrome, I think he is an excellent villain. I mean, better than that other villain from the sequel. In addition, the action is intense, suspenseful, and fun to watch. It's just like watching those other superhero movies where the good guys fight the bad guys just to save the day. All in all, the first Incredibles movie is awesome, funny, and a true classic to the Pixar library. And despite the intense violence that may frighten young viewers, I still recommend it to your whole family because it's that entertaining. Number 5. Turning Red Alright, here's the first modern day Pixar film I'm including on this list. Turning Red is about an adolescent schoolgirl named Maylin Lee, who eventually becomes a giant red panda due to her ancestors having a connection to red pandas. In order to control this new form, 
She has to learn to calm down, relax, and control her emotions so that she could turn back to normal. But when she gets overly excited, she turns into a giant red panda again. She was so used to this new look later on that she didn't want to grow out of it, much to her mother's dismay. First of all, I love the likable and relatable characters in this, especially Malin Lee and her friends. I also like the fact that this movie takes place in Canada in the year 2002, and no, this has nothing to do with 9-11. I'm looking at you, Mr. Enner. In addition, I love that Turning Red has anime references like this one. It also reminds me of Steven Universe in a way. Oh, and did I forget to mention the funny moments in this? One of my favorite parts was during the climax where Mei twerks in front of her mom just to annoy her. As awkward as this scene is, it's far more tolerable, funnier, and more family-friendly compared to Netflix's cuties, that's for sure. Overall, Turning Red is a great movie. And at first, I thought it wasn't going to be the best, but after giving it a chance on Disney+, Plus, I'm glad I enjoyed it. It's also a coming-of-age story done right. But the sad thing is, it's one of the few new Pixar movies that only streamed on Disney Plus due to the current pandemic going around. Number 4. Up. Up is about a lonely old man named Carl Fredrickson who goes on a big adventure for his late wife by attaching balloons to their house so that it could float all the way to Paradise Falls. But during the movie, he makes new friends including a boy scout named Russell and a talking dog named Doug but he also had to fight off his childhood hero named Charles Muntz, who plans to kill Kevin the Tall and Endangered Bird. And after his defeat in the end, Russell was given an Assisting the Elderly badge, and Carl eventually gained the family he never had. I love this movie, not just for its interesting premise, but because it's adventurous and epic, as well as its subtle message that life itself is an adventure, so don't get too caught up on other things, otherwise you'll miss out on everything else, or something like that. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that, because I'm not very good at understanding subtle morals. I especially love all the characters, especially Doug because, you know, I love dogs so much. Not to mention that the respective voice actors, including the late Ed Asner as Carl, and the late Christopher Plummer as Charles Muntz. Oh, and did you know that Charles Muntz was named after Charles Mintz, the guy who stole Walt Disney's rights to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit? Yeah, I can understand why Charles Muntz is the main villain in this movie. Overall, Up is positively awesome and uplifting, no pun intended. And it just goes to show you that even the younger generations can relate to older generations like Carl himself. So therefore, I totally recommend it to everyone who loves Pixar in general. Number 3. Coco. Here's the secondary Pixar film from the 2010s. Coco is about a young Hispanic boy named Miguel who goes on an adventure in the land of the dead where he meets and befriends a troublemaker named Hector, and together, they both try and find Ernesto de la Cruz, who Miguel believes was his great-great-grandfather. There's a good reason why Coco is number 3. And it's not only the characters themselves, but also the beautiful visuals, like other Pixar films, the music and songs, and overall great storytelling. One of my most favorite parts was the big twist where Ernesto de la Cruz turns out to be the villain who poisoned Hector and stole his song so that he could become famous. And he's not really Miguel's great-great-grandfather after all. And in my opinion, this is a twist villain done right because for one thing, we get to know him at the beginning of the film. Secondly, he actually had more character depth and personality than Hans from Disney's Frozen, who turned out to be forced at the last minute. And thirdly, it does make perfect sense why Ernesto's the main villain of this movie, because it's kind of realistic. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who stole other people's ideas just to become famous, and that's wrong and illegal. Oh, and I thought it was quite ironic that Ernesto suffers the same defeat as in The Land of the Living, where a huge bell falls on him and kills him. But the best part of the film of all was this emotional scene where Miguel tearfully sings, Remember Me to Coco, who finally manages to remember Hector, who was the real great-great-grandfather of Miguel this whole time. 
and thanks to him, the family curse was lifted, and he finally got his wish to become a musician like he always wanted. All in all, Coco is not only my third most favorite Pixar film, but also the best movie in 2017. You could also say that it's fantastical. And furthermore, the Mexican holiday, Dia de los Muertos, was celebrated on November 1st and 2nd, which is quite the coincidence since I've added this to the list during this month. And it's also a coincidence that this year marks Coco's 5th anniversary. Number 2. Finding Nemo Finding Nemo is about a daddy clownfish named Marlin, who goes on an adventure with an Atlantic blue tang named Dory, voiced by Ellen DeGeneres, to find his lost son Nemo, who is kidnapped by human divers and taken to a dental office in Sydney, Australia. For one thing, I like a lot of these characters, especially Dory, who is my sister's favorite character because she's hilarious. I also like Bruce because he looks so menacing, and at first, I thought he would be the main villain here, but he's actually neutral slash good, but eventually went crazy after sniffing Dory's blood by accident. I even like the funny moments here and there, and it's not just with Dory, but also these seagulls who only say, MINE, 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 and only want food. Finding Nemo deserves the number 2 spot because I always love going to aquariums and see fish swimming around. While it does have very sad moments like Coral's death at the beginning, it knows when to be uplifting, and it still holds up compared to its DreamWorks counterpart, Shark Tale, which I used to like, but not anymore. Before I get to my number one pick, I just want to give a bunch of honorable mentions. Luca. It got beat up by Turning Red because I find Turning Red to be the most interesting when it comes to Disney Plus exclusives. Monsters, Inc. It would have been number two because I find the scene where Boo cries while lights are flickering a bit too frightening, even in my youth. But I still like the movie overall. Inside Out While this movie is good too, but I think it's kind of a weird concept to have living emotions live inside a young girl's mind, and that premise alone kind of makes me feel a little bit dirty if you ask me. No offense. Soul same reasons as with Inside Out, except it's about souls and death. Brave. It's alright, but not the best Pixar film. But still, it's better than Cars 2 in terms of writing and consistency. Though, it should have been called by its original title, The Bear and the Bow, because then it would make a lot of sense. And my number one pick for the best Pixar movie of all time is, and it should be obvious by now, Toy Story. You guys knew this was coming, didn't you? This movie's about toys that come to life when no one is looking. Woody was the leader of the toys until the arrival of a brand new toy named Buzz Lightyear, who seemed to replace Woody for a while until they both become good friends in the end, and together, they make their way back to Andy's new home. One of the biggest reasons why I love this franchise so much in general is because it was the real reason why I became a huge Pixar fan in the first place. And I also love playing with toys in general, just not all the time. I'm also thankful that Toy Story got to appear in Kingdom Hearts 3 as a world known as Toy Box. Here's hoping they'll bring it back again in a future Kingdom Hearts game as a returning world, because it's such a fun level to play in. When it comes to Toy Story characters, my most fair of them all is Woody, because I used to play as a cowboy when I was a little kid, and he's usually the main hero of this franchise. Buzz Lightyear will be my second favorite, and Jesse will be my third favorite. In conclusion, when it comes to Pixar movies, Toy Story will always be my number one favorite because of these reasons alone. And if you love toys in general, then this will be the perfect film for you. And if they are ever going to make a fifth movie, then hopefully it'll fix the problems the fourth one had. Now let me know in the comments section which of these Pixar movies are your favorite. Do you agree with my list, or do you have your own personal preference? Also, who else is excited to see Elemental next year? Because I know I am. Oh, and be sure to look out for my Top 12 Worst Christmas Movies video, which will be sometime in December along with my short Advent Calendar videos. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.